some beautiful crepuscular crepuscular rays. I never know how to pronounce that mess, so I call them crepe muscular rays because I like crepes and they're such muscular rays, they punch right through the clouds. <laughs> So whenever I see them, I call them crepe muscular, but it doesn't matter because you can't see them right now anyways, and I'm driving, so I can't adjust the camera. But anyways, there's some good crepe muscular action going on right now. Fly. Okay, back to driving. Okay, we just officially crossed through. Now, if I remember correctly, there's also a highway that intersects in here, so something along those lines. <laughs> so you can either, oh, hello. So you can either veer off to the highway. There's the administration office. Park entrance is straight ahead. This is all part of the park here. And a hunter, a hunting, well, yes, with my camera, but let me uh, clarify. A good grazing spot for deer if you wanna go hunting for them for photographs later. Definitely don't go hunting for them with a gun since you're inside of the state park and you'll get in big, big trouble for hunting in here. <laughs> I always hunt with my camera anyways. FYI, this is the park where, if you've watched my channel before, you may have heard the story a couple of times. The bobcat ran in front of me and I didn't have the camera ready. So I fully intend to have the camera ready this time. I may have to delete and edit out a lot of footage, but I'm going to be ready if a damn bobcat runs across in front of me this time. Better yet, a panther. So, come on. Fingers and toes crossed. Anywho, that's your last fork. You can turn right to go to County Road 426. Otherwise, you continue on straight into the park. This loop is absolutely beautiful. And in a little bit, we're gonna be approaching the one-way section, which is perfect for bike riding, walking, running, or driving. It is, like I said, one way. So it's a nice, slow, leisurely pace but it takes you to all of the individual trailheads in the park for the most part, so that you're able to park at your desired one or ones if you don't want to walk them all. And there's, you know, nice little parking areas at each trailhead. Like here's the first point of interest coming up. This is the Alexander Blair Big Oak Trail. So, um, and then over to our left is where the Wild Orange Grove Trail is, which looks like there's a warning or some kind of closure there. So I'm going to check that out when I check in and get my map later. Um, the rest of the Orange Grove is up here on the right, which is what all these funny looking things that are covered are. <laughs> This is some overflow parking if you want to get out and ride your bike or walk. And we are now officially entering the bike trail slash one-way drive. I'm going to shut up and stop talking for most of this now because I just want you to take in the beauty. I'll interject here and there if I have something of interest to mention, but... As you can see, there on the right to the right of that line is the bike trail. There's all kinds of little pull-offs, points of interest, wildlife crossing signs, etc. And then this main part is the part that you drive on. I'm gonna put down the windows because it's gorgeous out. I wanna hear nature.
All right, we're approaching the first little parking area. As you can see here, there is about four or five spaces. You can hike Hickory Trail to Big Oak Trail here. And then to the left is Hickory Trail to Fern Garden Trail. Fern Garden Trail was my second favorite trail here. I think that's a really beautiful one and it's supposedly a good one for wildlife. Right now I'm just taking you through on a quick tour. Like I said, this is just a scenic driving tour to kind of explain the layout of the park. I will um, show you the map and the trailheads as well. All right, here to the left is the Richard Lieber Memorial Trail, which has an awesome tree, and I'll give you more information on that. There's a small parking area for that as well. But as you can see, this trail is breathless taking the trees even in the middle of uh, November December are just gorgeous so lush so green you can see why it's a important wildlife corridor and why the CCC had such an interest in the property and preserving it and conserving it for future generations. This, this, blah, blah. this is the next little parking area. This is for the Young Hammock Trail. Most of these trails are interconnected, so you can take one to the other to another, and they'll all lead eventually back to um, the initial trail that you started at. Uh, there's only, I think, like one or two exceptions to that, um, but the trail map is excellent. And again, you don't have to. Uh, one of the things I love about this park is that it's so accessible. It has this gorgeous paved road that takes you through most of the points of interest. You can drive or walk or bike to whichever trails you want to hike, whether that be one or two or all of them. You can walk as little or as much as you like. If the weather's not cooperating, if it's storming, if it's cold, if it's hot, and you just want to do one or two at a time, you can do that. I just think that this is such a user-friendly park and, again, just breathtaking. So I am going to shut up now and let you enjoy the scenery. We're now approaching the Pine Hammock Trail to Young Hammock Trail. Most of the trails are pedestrian only off of the main paved road, so no bikes on those because they're very rooty and muddy and wildlifey. <laughs> but the paved road is definitely bike friendly. And the speed limit is only 15 here, so you don't have to worry about cars whirring through and being a safety risk if you want to ride your bike through here safely. It's all going to be going the one direction. I love all the air plants that are growing and the resurrection fern. We're coming up here in a little parking area with another trailhead that 
let's take a look at the wildlife that we may encounter with any luck. And see we may see a Florida panther which would be my dream come true a bobcat white-tailed deer gray fox black bears raccoons otters and the ever exotic gray squirrel I do see plenty of those but I would be happy with anything else on the list <laughs> Oh, I just think that's funny that they felt the need to include gray squirrels. <clears throat> oh, it looks like they had a washout here, maybe from the storm. I do know that this park was closed for quite some time after Hurricane Ian. In fact, the primitive campground just reopened last month. And um, the park itself has not been reopened for very long, so thankfully it doesn't appear that Nicole damaged it any further. <clears throat> we'll see if any of the trails are off limits. We're approaching my number one favorite trail here in a moment, which happens to be the most popular in the park with the largest parking area. Oh, there's one of those gray squirrels, guys. Did you get it? Now let's see if we can cross off the rest of the list. <laughs> I'm gonna turn off the camera until we're past these people out of respect for their privacy. So this is the Cypress Swamp Trail that we're approaching, which is the largest of the parking areas. And actually there's no cars here right now, so I may loop back around and just do that trail right now since it happens to be my favorite. And then if I can snag that shady spot, I might even hang out there for a little bit of a brunch. Because I'm getting a bit hungry. This is the Sweet Gum to Ancient Hammock Trail. You would also want to park in the Swamp, the Cypress Swamp Trail if you were going to be hiking those because there's no separate parking for that trail. Let me not crack my knuckles on camera, that's embarrassing. drive through this little pull-off and I can show you the memorial here. It says it's um, in honor of Margaret Shippen Roebling, who was Mrs. John Roebling. And I believe she is the founder of this park, but we will get a better look at that later because I didn't feel like straining my eyes for the little print. <laughs> I'm all about transparency in this channel, you know. Oh, here's another washout. So they definitely had some flooding here for sure. I know some of this footage may seem a bit monotonous um, to some of you, but I really want to give you a feel for kind of the full stretch of the bike path and drive for when you come visit yourself. This is the next little parking area. We're past the halfway point now. This is for the ancient hammock. I forget which path connects there on the left. Maybe the Young Hammock or the Fern Hammock. One of those. Definitely get a trail map. It tells you which connects to which. And it's, like I said, very user friendly. I'm so pleased to see that there's not a lot of real visible damage. It looks like maybe some downed trees were removed. It's maybe a little less thick in here right now, but... 
I was a little worried about this park. I'm not going to lie. I was feeling very concerned for her. Okay, we just passed the other half of the amphitheater. Now, if the tram tour is running, I understand that it covers a portion of the park that's inaccessible to the public otherwise. So it's a part that we would not get to see driving or walking. So I'm hoping that it's resumed. It's supposed to sometime this month, but I don't know if it's gonna be later in the month if, if we're gonna be a little bit too early for it. So fingers and toes crossed. I'd really love to do the tram ride. I'm definitely gonna do the museum this time, but I would really love to make it a two for an experience the historic tram ride here as well. I've heard it's about an hour and well worth the ticket. Okay, back to shutting up now. The museum hours are 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., so we are a little bit early to check it out now, but I do want to get in there shortly after 10 today because I don't want to give myself room to put that off and miss it again as well. Okay, we're now approaching the other end of the Fern Garden Trail. As I mentioned before, a lot of the trails are interconnected. If you were to park here and take the Fern Garden Trail, it would come out on the other end we already passed, so you can start at either end. And there is parking at both ends for that one. I think that is a really beautiful section of trail in there. There's a lot of swampy area. some time to get a little ahead of us so they don't think I'm creeping along but that was the entirety of the one-way bike path slash um, trail wildlife drive um, so the scenic little one-way drive there now we are circling back I want to show you the family campground because I don't believe it's going to be a real crowded time in the campground right now and I know last time it was super congested. Okay, there's the other trail. We just passed that. That's one of the only ones I believe that you cannot get to um, from the other ones. So once we get up here a little ways, um, we will see the primitive campground on our right which is where we'll be staying in the wild campground. I prefer it so much better than the family campground, even though there's no hookups and very little amenities aside from a vault toilet. Uh, there's a lot more wildlife and a lot more peace and quiet and a lot less people. So all things you know me, I love. I also want to ask when I check in if there's, I think there was a gate code, but I don't Ask. Oh, there it was. Okay, so yes, we are able to get in before the park opens at 8 because I am hoping to do that to try and do some wildlife spotting before any other people enter the park in their vehicles. Okay, so here on the right is the Hammock Inn picnic area and the CCC Museum. So this is where you would come to rent bikes, to get firewood. Um, the camp store is here. There's the little VIP tours that you can book in advance. The gift shop, um, they've got a little butterfly museum, I believe, or butterfly garden, I mean. Probably not very active right now. Looks like they're starting to decorate for the holidays. We'll definitely check in there in a little bit. That's just their gift shop 
visitor center. And then there is a playground and picnic area and restroom back that way. This is where they hold music festivals and events. Here on the right is the CCC Museum, which will be opening shortly at 10 a.m. So we'll definitely check that out. It says 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So it's, oh, and it says it's open. Okay, so we'll do that here in just a minute. Um, these are the tram tours. So I'm wondering if they're running today. We will have to ask in either the gift shop or the museum. Looks like it's the camp store. Yeah, and it looks like the it's an option, so we're definitely going to check that out. I would like to do the museum and tram tour today. All right, now we're going to check out the family campground here. There to the right is the primitive campground. This is the family campground. Okay, so there's a little boardwalk that looks like it heads out to the trails. Okay, and as you can see, <laughs> This is exactly why I chose the Primitive Campground. No offense. Alright, it looks like there's the dump station exit. That's quite a big dump station. Overflow parking. Sites 105 to 138. We are definitely not going to drive all the way through. We're just going to try to do the minimum loop here. Okay. So as you can see, this is not personally my jam. To me, this is more of like a KOA private RV campground type vibe where it's like... RV park, basically a parking lot. The tents are right on top of each other. The rigs are right on top of each other. Um, you can see how close together the sites are. There's one of the bathhouses. There's one of the dumpsters for throwing out trash. One of the playgrounds. We'll just take a quick old peekaroo and then drive back out. But I mean, you can definitely see how on top of your neighbors that you are here. Alright, so I think we're able to loop through. I don't know. Everything is so congested. Okay, it says bike trail begins here. I think I'm in the wrong spot. So we're going to have to figure out how the heck to get out of here. But anyways, that's enough of a vibe for you guys to get of this campground. Anyways, I'm thinking that's basically what the entire family campground looks like. So um, now we're going to make our way out of here. That was the family campground essentially and an overview of the park layout. 
I'll show you the primitive campground when we check in there after 1 p.m. So for now, we're gonna backtrack as soon as I figure out how. And uh, we are going to check out the museum and hopefully book a tram tour. I have no idea if I'm driving the right way or not, but these campsites are absolutely horrid. Oh my gosh, it's like being in a parking lot. No, thank you. I am so glad I did not book in here. I feel like I'm getting claustrophobic just watching people pull into their campsites. Get me out of here. Okay, there is, I guess, oh no, those are more sites. I thought it was an overflow parking area. Oh my gosh. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. No. No, no. That's all I can say about that. All right, so that's the family campgrounds. Now let's head back to the museum and we are going to park, get out, check around get a map and figure out whether or not we can book a tram tour too. Okay, so we struck out on the tram tour. It doesn't resume until the week of the 12th. So we just missed it, darn it. But I think the museum is open at 10 a.m., so we should be good to go there. It should be open for now.
all of them. There, the, I think there's one that has a boat plane in it, and that's from Niagara. Oh, okay. Because they, they, they built that. The problem with uh, Rec Hall is Ian put a hole in the roof. Yeah, he day. saw the, the tarps. Yeah. That damage happened down in, in right. uh, Fort, Fort Myers. All right, my friends, I've shown you the one-way bike path, hiking, driving loop that has all of the main trails off of it. I've shown you the family campground, the CCC Museum, the trams that we're not allowed to take because we're about two weeks too early for those to resume, and the gift shop. So that's pretty much everything. I'm going to show you the primitive campground now because that's also part of the bike path and there's like a picnic area and kind of like a bird blind wildlife watching area back there. So we're going to go check all that out. I'll show you where my site's going to be and then the tour will be complete and I'll be ready to check in and welcome my friend. All right, let's go. the primitive campground area which is actually <clears throat> I think kind of like their hiking trail bike path back here as well the first site is about a mile mile and a half back from here I believe deer in here last time so hopefully I get lucky again this time <clears throat> especially in the evening I forget what this structure here is to the right I think it's just some kind of picnic slash trailhead for the bikes curious to see. I know that the primitive campground was shut down for quite a while after Ian, so <clears throat> definitely curious to see how it fared. Looks like they've definitely been working to even out the roads. It's so beautiful back here. I really, I mean, can you compare this to the family campground that we were just at? Is it any wonder why I prefer this? how open it is. The sand is a little on the soft side, but <clears throat> you know, Tara is so rugged, I'm not too concerned. <laughs> oh boy, we've got a big biker gang up ahead. Oh no. Yeah, so it looks like this whole area is new. I wonder if it flooded or washed out. I'm going to go ahead and stop filming now so that I don't invade their privacy until I get past them all. You can definitely tell where the road washed out and they had to bring in more clay and, <clears throat> and road in. This is where the bobcat ran out in front of me, right up around this corner. Oh, there goes my solar charger sliding and slipping. <laughs> I 
just to hit stop though because I know as soon as I do that dang bobcat's gonna run across. I just know it. It is getting cloudy. I wonder if it's gonna rain. <clears throat> we'll see if our site has cleared out yet. this time. I am, I am. <laughs> the campground is definitely more full than it was before. the start of the primitive campground. Each trash can upside down is one. So there's site one. <clears throat> and two. All right, it looks like three is empty and ready, although, man, four is crowded. I'm kind of hoping they, they don't look like they're getting ready to leave. Whoa. There was my site last time, five. <clears throat> There's so many little sparrows. And then right up here is the porta potty on the right between site eight and nine. <clears throat> this is the group site here on the left. Or between seven and eight, sorry. See, I really wanted nine because it's so big, but it's right across from the group site, which looks pretty crowded. And then I really wanted site 10 because it's enormous, but I don't want to be that close to that group either. wonder if 11 <clears throat> I wonder if any of these are available primitive sites. I believe that was 15 right there that we just passed. Yes, no camping beyond this point. And it is a dead end road right up ahead though where you can see that pointed structure. That is the um, <clears throat> bird blind wildlife viewing kind of platformy area. So I think we're going to pull in there. I don't think it's going to be very popular right now since it's not a very big birding time. And I think we'll make a little cup of coffee. And by then it should be one o'clock so we can go check in and pull into our campsite. And 
figure out how the best way to set up is. <clears throat> Looks like the wild pigs have been at it again. Alright, I think we're going to try out the new kettle. I thought I heard scrub jays out here my last visit, and sure enough, oh my god, I would die if I saw an indigo snake. That would like make my day. Or the pine snake. Either or. <clears throat> See, we're clouding up here. I have no idea what I was just filming since I wasn't looking at the camera. Oh, it feels so nice under the shade. It's really only hot in the sun. It's about 78 out. Hi, Tara. My friend should be here in a couple hours. I think I'm going to go up and check in and get settled into the site here in a minute. It just feels so good right now. I wish I knew if it was going to rain or not. All right, I am heading back to my site number three. I feel like Little Red Riding Hood going through the woods to get to this bathroom.